have done a few simple experiments to visualize different state of a hard candy such as glassy, rubbery, melt and viscous flow. Please watch this video and stay with me. I am going to explain it after a few slides. Most of our graduate students in my group work on glass transition and state diagrams in relation to food stability and quality. Frequently, my students and my colleagues ask me to explain the glass transition in a simple way. Keeping their questions in mind, I am making this video to provide a clear understanding of glass transition, their relevance to food. I am planning to make a couple of more videos on this topic related to the glass transition. Please watch this video until the end and subscribe to this channel if you like this video. What are we going to learn? First, we could try to understand why chewing gum is in the rubbery state. Second, how rubbery chewing gum could be transformed into a glassy state. Third, we can observe the state changes of a hard candy. Fourth, how we could use different paths of temperature and moisture control to achieve different states of a food. Finally, I am going to explain the observation of Dr. White and Dr. Cake Bread in relation to the sugar-based food products and then I am going to explain the realization of Dr. Sled and Dr. Levin. They visualized and explored extensively the glass transition concept and its relationship with food quality and stability. We know chewing gum needs to be rubbery since we need very high chewiness so that we could continue to chew the gum as long as possible and it should not be ready to be swallowed. Gummy candy should be leathery that is little hard to chew and after chewing some time it is ready to be swallowed. Therefore we need to produce both chewing gum and gummy candy into rubbery state that is soft rubbery and leathery. Chewing gum should be bent and it can change its shape without break like ductile material that is elongate without break when we apply force. It is due to its rubbery characteristics. We can observe the rubbery state of chewing gum from this experiment. In this video I was holding and pressing a chewing gum with two fingers and we can see it was bending without break since it is in its rubbery state. I had placed the chewing gum in a freezer that is at minus 20 degrees C for one hour and then compress it again with my finger. You can now observe it is not bending and not flexible as before rather it was broken into two pieces. This was due to the transformation of rubbery chewing gum into a glassy state as we place it at low temperature. In this example, we could observe how a rubbery material could be transformed into a glassy state by cooling and vice versa. As we remember, I have shown a video at the beginning. In that video, we could observe that a glassy candy was shattered into pieces like a water glass bottle shattered into pieces when thrown against a solid concrete wall. A hard candy was heated, it was then melted and we can observe viscous flow. I was then pulling the viscous melted candy after some time when it was cooling in the air then it transformed into a rubbery state. Upon further cooling it was transformed to a glassy state and we can see the cylindrical glass rod become brittle and shattered into small pieces when I move or pull a little bit. Glass is unable to stand much tension. Glassy candy rod was also showing its brittle characteristics 
as it was unable to take tension. In this video, we can see viscous flow to rubbery and then glassy and then shattered into pieces with little tension. Again, I made this simple experiment just to visualize and understand the state changes. A glass transition is observed when an amorphous material turns from a ductile or flexible state to a hard, rigid, stiff and brittle. At this transition, the solid glassy state is changed to viscoelastic rubbery state. At this temperature, the free volume or the gap between the molecular chains increases by 2.5 times. After cooling, it is then transformed to hard, rigid, stiff and brittle. Pure crystalline material does not have a glassy transition and it is only applicable to amorphous materials. Semi-crystalline materials such as rice composed of amorphous and crystalline components therefore could have both glass transition temperature and melting temperature. In crystalline solids, particles are arranged in a repeating pattern. They have a regular and ordered arrangement resulting in a definite shape. In amorphous solids, particles are arranged randomly. They do not have an order arrangement resulting in irregular shapes. In DHC, melting is a peak observed by crystalline and a shape is observed for glassy in the heat flow curve. In this slide, we can observe the heating or cooling rate on the state changes that is glass, rubber, crystal, melt and flow. In the upper layer, the effects of slow heating and cooling rates are shown. Consider candies and glassy state. Slow heating can transform from glassy state to rubbery state. Further heating, the rubbery state could transform to a crystalline state and then melt and then flow. One important point, crystalline state could not be transformed to rubbery if it is cooled since crystallinity is the equilibrium state. However, crystalline state could be transformed to melting state upon heating and reverse could, cooling could transform to crystallinity. Lower layer shows fast heating and fast cooling effects. Glass could be transformed to rubbery with fast heating and then cool to be transformed to melt and then flow. We could observe interestingly that rubbery state to melting state with escaping the crystalline state. Reverse fast cooling could transform from flow to melt then rubbery and then glassy. In this slide I have shown the effects of slow and fast heating or cooling and removal or addition of water. We can see from the flow state material can be transformed to crystal or glass by removing water. Similarly, reverse flow could be possible by adding water. Similarly, rubber could be transformed to crystal or glass. Again, glass could be transformed to melt by rapid heating and could be reversed by rapid cooling. However, crystals could be transformed to melt with slow heating and could be reversed by slow cooling. In the case of sugar-based foods, British scientists Dr. White and Dr. Kegbred pointed out that sugar glasses are very unstable in the presence of moisture and this instability under certain conditions can lead to various defects. For example, in dry atmosphere, crystallization or graining or collapse could occur, whereas stickiness, graining or fluidity could occur in the moist atmosphere. It is mainly when products are stored at above glass transition. 
the significant applications of the glass transition concept in the 1980s emerged in food processing when Dr. Levin and Dr. Sled realized and identified major merits of glass transition. Many other groups around the globe generate a significant data on the glass transition and state diagram. In the next video, I will include more examples and explanations of glass transition in relation to food quality and stability. I would like to thank you for watching this video until the end.